Hi there, it's good to see you, even if it's a rainy Wednesday. I'm Lenny Slagon. And I'm Letitia Bush. We hope you're staying dry at least. We've got a lot happening today on Fox 10 News. Do you have concerns about where oil storage facilities could be built in Mobile in the future? Well, there's a public hearing next Tuesday. Government leaders held talks this morning because they want to hear from you before making any decision. Fox 10 News reporter Steve Alexander was at that meeting. It's a story you'll only see on Fox 10. We would just need to offer a, an operating definition of quality of life that this committee used. Defining the term quality of life is one of the issues members of the Industrial Zoning Advisory Committee have been talking about. The committee is made up of members appointed by the mayor, city council, and other groups looking at regulations concerning oil storage facilities along waterways. Late last year, American Tank and Vessel withdrew a proposal to build a facility along Paper Mill Road near the Plateau and Africatown communities. This after concerns about what types of petroleum would be stored there. What evenings do we have for you next week? This morning, the committee decided to hold a public hearing next Tuesday night in Mobile for interested people to come out and share their opinions with this committee so that can be factored in as the committee makes recommendations to take forth to the city council. I want to see this community turn out and speak up about what they want to happen on our waterfront. What kind of industry do you want in this community? One person with friends in the Africatown area showed up at today's meeting to talk about what people there are worried about. Their concern is the health factor over a long period of time and what impact just from the breathing of the emission, everything that's going out there, how would that affect them? After next Tuesday's hearing, this committee will meet again Wednesday morning and talk about the ideas that were discussed. Reporting for Mobile, Steve Alexander, Fox 10 News. All right, that meeting will be held next Tuesday night, February 18th from 5 o'clock until 7. It's at the International Trade Center which is located at 250 North Water Street in Mobile. The Mobile County Sheriff's Office is working on matching recovered stolen items to the rightful owners. Now, yesterday we told you deputies found nearly $80,000 worth of stolen items in Mobile County after some drug-related arrests. Now investigators need your help to speed up the time-consuming process of getting the items back to victims. Detectives say they are getting calls from people ready to claim their stuff, but in some cases, theft victims don't have serial numbers or can't remember any distinctive marks. You have a number of, you know, just for instance, three or four lawnmowers, and they all happen to be John Deere lawnmowers. Well, every one of them is going to have a green body and a yellow engine. Uh, and without any distinctive serial number, you know, we're not going to know one from the other. On Fox 10 News at 5, we'll show you how deputies are combing through their records to find a match. Meantime, an alleged copper thief is facing charges after being caught in the act. Chickasaw police say three people heard sounds coming from the basement of Spanish Fort Trace apartment building. We're told they found Nielsen Owens stealing copper. Officers say Owens tried to make a run for it, but one of the witnesses shot him in the leg. Owens was treated at the hospital, then booked on burglary charges. He's currently out of jail on bond. A meeting tonight concerning magnet school changes. Last week, the school voted to move the county magnet school for math and science to Eichold Mertz Elementary in the fall. Now they need to move because right now the magnet school is in a building that belongs to another school system. A parent meeting will happen tonight. It's for parents to discuss options for the current students. It starts at 6 o'clock at Eichold Mertz. Well, a renewed push to ban smoking at most businesses in Alabama. State Senator Vivian Davis figures of Mobile got her bill through the Senate yesterday. The measure bans smoking in most places. It excludes bars and private clubs. The senator has passed similar legislation in the Senate before, only to have it die in the House. It's up in the air how the bill will fare in the House this time around. The Alabama legislature is also addressing tanning beds. The House voted to ban teens from using them unless they have a parent's permission. That will require 16 and 17-year-olds to have a parent's written consent 
Along with that written consent, 15 year olds would need a parent there actually at the session. Uh, children 14 and younger would need to be banned from using tanning beds. That is unless it's prescribed by a doctor. The state Senate will now take a look at the measure. Man, that mist follow us, <laughs> just followed us all day today. These yeah. little birdies don't seem to mind it at all. No, it's it's like I guess it's refreshing. Who knows? <laughs> but not for me. Yeah. Not Everyone's too much. wanting it to just get out of here. Yeah. When we told everyone yesterday we were gonna have to go through one more day of yeah. this yeah. and unfortunately we're seeing it through the day today and I promise there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We just have to get through today and then things start to look a little bit better. But yeah, right. annoying mist out there. And it's so light, it's not even really yeah. picking up on the storm tracker. You and still it will need an umbrella. It I will found. fool you. Yeah, you think you're good and you right. walk out. Oh, gosh, no, put your hood yeah. on. That's right. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the storm tracker. And you can see a few spots. For the first time, we are hearing from a local cashier who survived the unthinkable. We showed you this surveillance video of Maida McCormick as she was struck by an out-of-control truck. It happened last month as she was working at a convenience store in Leakesville. Doctors say it's a miracle she made it out alive. Since the crash, she's made incredible strides in her recovery. McCormick told us in her first interview, she doesn't remember much from the crash. This is just not something that's been easy for me to comprehend. I don't think anybody gets up in the morning and says, I'm going to go to work and get hit by drugs. It's amazing to even see her talking. You'll hear more from McCormick, including what she had to do to survive the wreck in a Fox 10 News special tonight, A Living Miracle at 9 p.m. A verdict today in the corruption case of former New Orleans Mayor Ray Nagin. It's got to do with city work money following Hurricane Katrina. Bob Grip checking in with the details. Bob? There's a lot more to come on Fox 10 News. Up next, the debit ceiling debate is in the hands of the Senate. We'll tell you about the bill that made it through the House. And then after that, an unsettling story coming out of North Carolina. Listen to this. Patients at a medical center may have been exposed to a rare disease. And now all they can do is sit back and wait. We'll let you know what happened there at 417. Friday is Valentine's Day, and there are a couple of movies you could take your little sweetheart to see. You're going to find out what they are at 424. Okay, can't wait. And a couple of minutes after that, a country uh, music couples, well, two of them, in fact, are paying tributes to a pair of legends as well, Vince Gill and Paul Franklin. We'll tell you about their new collection, so stay close. The House passed a one-year debt limit bill Tuesday night, raising the nation's borrowing limit with no strings attached for one year. Yeah, we want to check in now with Michelle's, Michelle Macaluso in Washington for all of those details. The, the bill was approved by the Senate just a little while ago in a near party line vote. It now heads to the president's desk for a signature. The legislation is the third consecutive debt measure passed without White House uh, concessions. When we come back, myths about heart disease prevention. Taking fish oil and multivitamins might not be enough to prevent a heart attack. And the wife who sold her wedding ring to pay for her husband's medical care is getting a gift of a lifetime. Stick around. We're back in about two minutes. Patients at a medical center in North Carolina have been diagnosed or exposed, I should say, to a rare disease. While the chances of patients coming down with the illness are rare, that's not calming their minds as they wait and wonder. Fox's Chad Tucker explains. That's a phone call you do not want to get. No, and I, I feel her frustration. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's a mother. She mm -hmm. wants to be around for her daughter. I certainly hope everything works out. Me too. Well, if you or someone you know suffers from depression, there's a new reason to get it treated in its early stages. Yeah, it could help reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke. Researchers took more than 200 older people diagnosed with depression and then randomly assigned them to antidepressants and psychotherapy or standard care determined by a doctor. They found the patients with antidepressants and therapy almost halved their risk of heart attack or stroke during the eight-year follow-up period. They're now doing more research to further their findings. Well, there are a lot of myths out there when it comes to heart disease. For example, you might have heard that fish oil, a supplement, can help prevent it. Well, doctors say it is good for you, but you would have to take a whole lot in order to prevent heart disease. The same thing goes for multivitamins. Studies show it's best to get your heart healthy 
healthy nutrients through a balanced diet. And then there's family history of heart disease. Even though you might be more prone to get heart disease because of your family history, that doesn't mean that you can't drastically lower your chances. It really is rather simple. You have to eat right, exercise, pay attention to your weight, know your numbers. We're talking cholesterol and blood pressure here, and don't smoke. If you're not sure about your heart health numbers, you should join us in a couple of days for our Go Red Gulf Coast event. It's a free heart screening event, including BMI, weight, height, a blood pressure check, and cholesterol screening. It'll be Friday, Valentine's Day, here at the Fox 10 Studios, but also Thomas Hospital and North Baldwin Infirmary from 8 in the morning until 11. Well, do you know your numbers? Blood pressure, I do. Cholesterol. We did that recently here for yes. some employees, and I really appreciated that. You mm -hmm. know, you have valuable, uh, vital information. Hopefully, mm -hmm. you can come out and join us. Absolutely. Well, it's a story coming up that just might bring a tear to your eye. A dying man's last wish is granted in Idaho. Michael Sherwood was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2004. His battle with it has left him wheelchair bound, relying on his wife Monica to take care of him. No timetable for how long he has, but he wanted to give his wife something to remember him by. You know, nine years ago, she had to sell her wedding ring to cover medical bills. They didn't have insurance. Now, wish granters are giving Michael a chance to get Monica a new engagement ring. I feel 100% better that she's got a beautiful wedding set again. I didn't expect it to, you know, be so exquisite and beautiful. Um, I couldn't be more thankful. Right, big or small? Dale Earnhardt Jr. fan there with the ah, number eight yes. NASCAR jacket. I was going to say big or small. That ring really does mean a lot. So good for her. And speaking of love, Valentine's Day is just two days away. It is. If you're planning date night, there are two movies you might want to check out. And it's Hollywood Week on American Idol. Have you been watching? I have. Contestants are feeling the pressure, I tell you what. We've got the details when we come back. Some romantic movies set to hit the box office this Valentine's Day. It's Friday, <laughs> and the stars are hitting the red carpet for the premiere of About Last Night. It tells a story about two new couples and their love, okay? Kevin Hart, he's been making the rounds, talking all about his new movie. It's real. I think people can relate. He's on a roll, Letitia. He was just in Ride Along. And he is just hilarious. I got to see that. And the stars of the new romantic fantasy film, Winter's Tale, grace the red carpet, too. The movie starring Colin Farrell tells the story of a burglar who falls for an heiress who dies in his arms. The man played by Farrell then sets out to find her when he realizes he has the gift of reincarnation. Well, Russell Crowe's in this, too. Uh, you can catch both Winter's Tale and About Last Night in theaters this Friday. And don't forget, it's Valentine's Day. You don't want to get that call There's from. Another, so people who don't have a Valentine, <laughs> they call it something else. Tweet me if you know what it is. Like, I'm drawing a blank right now, but they don't call it Valentine's Day. They call it something Ooh, else. Ooh, okay, yeah, I want to know right. what that is. The American <laughs> Idol contestants' last, our last chance to impress the judges, that is, before the top 30 is revealed. The judges are telling us what the singers will have to do to make it through Hollywood Week. But for right now... Hollywood Week continues with 77 contestants getting a final chance to impress before the top 30 are announced. After surviving last week's group round, the contestants are performing solo with a live band. Tune in for the action tonight at 7 right here on Fox 10. Two country stars are paying tribute to the music of two country legends. Fox's Ashley Dvorkin sits down with the singers to talk about the collaboration. We're getting a look at some shocking video from California. A man breaks into a car to get at electronics, but it isn't just any car. Bob, uh, we hear this was actually a police cruiser. That's true. A well, the FBI has launched a campaign to snuff out dangerous laser pointer attacks on pilots. We're learning nearly 11 attacks are reported each day, and as a result, the FBI is offering a big reward for information leading to arrests. Renee Marsh has more. The police have new rules for those who plan to attend the Mardi Gras parades downtown. We have the story next. And you'll also get a look at what parades are rolling Friday and Saturday. We want to thank you for staying. We're back in just a few minutes. Coming up.
All right, the good times getting ready to roll in Mobile. Parades are set to start downtown on Friday. This year, there are going to be some changes on Dolphin Street we want to tell you about. It will be closed to vehicle traffic until 11 p.m. after evening parades. Mobile Police Chief James Barber says there is a concern for pedestrians. Yeah, he says officers will monitor the streets for the last couple of parades and adjust if needed. Barber also says he is reevaluating daytime parades and manpower needed. Okay, get excited. Mobile's first parade rolls Friday. The Condi Cavaliers will get going at 6.30. Then Saturday, the party continues with five parades. The Order of the Rolling River rolls at 2 o'clock down Dolphin Island Parkway. The Bayport Parading Society takes over Government Street at 2.30. Then at 6.30, it's three in a row in downtown Mobile. The Atlanta Braves are going to be honoring a Mobile native next season. So neat to hear about this. We're talking about Hammer and Hank Aaron. The Braves will celebrate the 40th anniversary of his record-breaking 715th home run by wearing this patch through the season. The ceremony will be in early April before the Braves' home opener with the Mets. Aaron broke Babe Ruth's home run record in 1974, and he finished his career with 755 total home runs. Castaway Jose Alvarenga is now back home in his native El Salvador. Reporters and well-wishers greeted the man at the airport. The fisherman said he had been adrift on the Pacific Ocean for more than a year after his boat broke down in a storm. A couple of weeks ago, the man was found by rescuers on the Marshall Islands, just thousands of miles from South America. The man said his friend and fellow fisherman died of starvation after four weeks at sea. Alvarenga said he survived by drinking rainwater and catching turtles and seabirds for food. Parts of southern England are underwater from the heavy rain this winter. One storm after another has weakened seawalls and saturated the ground. Even more flooding is expected. People who live on the southern coastline or complain the government is not doing enough to help. Prime Minister David Cameron promises it will. I have to say things... Critics of the Prime Minister's government says his spending cuts have left Britain vulnerable to bad weather. With us, there are a couple recalls you might want to know about. We'll tell you about those then. You're going to see how the Mobile County Sheriff's Office is trying to get stolen property back to its rightful owners. It happens in less than two and a half minutes.